Go. Okay, guys. Um, you know, we talked at the club meeting the other night about this uh, Vanessa balancing machine that David uh, talked about. I've seen several different versions of them, ones where you actually put a dowel inside the fuselage and do it that way. But I've seen this one before, but never really thought much about it. But Dave was sold on it. And uh, because of that, because I know Dave is quite a craftsman, I figured we'd give it a try. Uh, I ended up going to Ace and buying pretty much everything. The, the piece of wood here is just nothing more than a uh, landscape stake. Just one of those, you know, one by two or whatever it is, landscape stakes, 59 cents, 3 8 dowel, um, the eighth inch cord. Uh, so I'm into this whole thing at probably just about 10 bucks. Um, I bought a couple of other little things that I ended up not using as far as the, the swivel and the pulley and things like this. And of course, this is just a rough draft of what's going on, uh, just simply because I wanted to see if it would work. Uh, this particular airplane is my um, World Models Sky Raider Mark II. Um, I've done a lot of uh, repairs to it, so it's a little bit heavier than it needs to be. Um, and I really haven't balanced it in a long time, so the idea was is I wanted to see just where it kind of sat with everything. Of course, I'll figure out a better way to tie this off when we get down to it. A couple of things to note. Uh, I drilled just a, a 964 hole through here, or, uh, just so the cord would go through, tied it off. Um, this is a 3 8 dowel, so I drilled a 3 8 hole through it. And I'll show you in a minute that it is quite tight, so it doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, honed it out a little bit so that the, the dowel would twist with some force without being too hard. Uh, what I want to show you is, is one thing I've been trying to figure out is what to do for a plumb bob. I've got a big uh, construction type plumb bob. Um, the problem is it's so big that I'm afraid that anything moving around or whatever, I'd have to drop it, it would go right through any wing. So what this is, is this is an old, um, this is actually a uh, clunk, a fuel clunk. Now what I ended up doing was tying some knots and seeing to just basically kite twine run it up through there and then I stuck a yellow headed pin in there so I'd have a point to be able to uh, see what it's going to. So it's heavy enough that it hangs down. Uh, it's just put on the dowel just with a simple single overhand slip knot. Um, holds holds well enough to what we're doing. The only problem I can see with this whole thing is just the simple fact that the plane wants to bob a lot about a lot. You don't want to be doing it if there's any sort of a breeze, anybody walking by. If you've got a heater on, your air conditioner, or something like that, it's not going to work um, very well because it moves too much, and you can see it wants to twist. Uh, I've got a, just a big fishing swivel right here. I've got an actual S-hook that I'm going to put on it. Um, I just put that on there just to make it simpler because I didn't want to have to be dealing with a piece of equipment that was going to be falling every time I wanted to do something. Real simple to put together. Had the whole thing together in, oh, what, 45 minutes maybe, if even that. I had to kind of find some different stuff here and there. One thing that uh, that's really important to note is when you do the wraps, um, I've got five wraps going here, make sure they're going the same way. They either come over the top or they go under the bottom or whatever, start from the inside, move out, start from the outside, move in, however you do it. Because if you think about it, if you start to where one of them's on the bottom, one's on the top, as you twist the dowel, it's actually going to want to twist opposite directions, which, thanks to the uh, brains of this family, my beautiful wife uh, figured that out. So. Anyway, what is uh, with this airplane, um, as you can see right now, it's sitting dead on. I've got these marks. I've, I found the, the instructions for this particular airplane um, and was able to find the um, center of gravity on it, which in this particular case is 85 millimeters. Uh, so I just take a, a square and measure the 85 millimeters on it, put a mark, put it up against the edge, put the marks on the wings. That's where we want to be. We were able to verify that this plane is about as level as you can get, and as you can see, it is dead level right there. I mean, it's, it's dead on the, the center of gravity. So, the way this works is, I'm going to go ahead and have my wife put this level on the tail. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of chunks of weight to the tail also to make it, to simulate it being tail heavy. And once again, when you do this, you also got, you got to remember that the, uh, um, Little the little bubble level you got on there is actually going to add weight to the tail, so you got to find a way to put it on there. I've seen people put like a, a a camera tripod next to the tail, put a straight edge on it with a level, and then just you know do it off that. So if we look at the mark here, um, of course we'll go through this fast. It's going to bob around a little bit because we really don't have time to let it settle to stabilize. But if you can see. And the, uh, according to this, the tail is down, and if you look at the level, um, I believe it actually shows the tail is down and that the nose, or the tail needs to come up, the nose needs to go down. Um, anyway, so 
what we want to do is we want to drive this to where um, it's over the center of gravity. So to do that, um, I'm going to go ahead and grab this and to bring the, the, the nose down, it just takes just very slight movements of this dowel. And we're going to keep going until it looks like it's about level on the tail. So keep we going. about there. Keep going. A little more. Right there. Okay. So by doing that, what we find then is if you look at the plumb bob here, now we see that the plumb bob shows that we're behind the center of gravity. So um, that meaning that it's tail heavy, um, the center of gravity being back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a whole bunch of just weights up here up front. Oops. Of course, me being me, I'm, I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see a damn thing I'm doing. Um, I'm going to put a bunch of weights up here. Of course, this is just temporary, so we'll just stick them here. Okay, so by doing that, what we'll find is the plug bob moves closer to center, but we'll also see that the um, bubble up there shows that it looks like now that the, t the nose needs to go up. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So to do that, so now we'll do it the other way. We'll twist it the other way. We'll just do some real light twists on it. Make sure that the cords don't move too much. Oops. Okay, are we level? We're pretty level. So now if we look at that, we're closer to the center of gravity, but according to that it says we still need a little bit more weight. So I'll throw this S hook on there. And I wish I had some more weight. I thought I did. Well, actually, I've got a bigger weight on the tail than I did originally. Anyway, so it shows we're still a little bit back, but we're showing that we're level. Correct? Just barely, yeah. barely on. Okay, so if I had a little piece of weight, something I can add for weight. Okay, okay yeah, she's got some there. So just hand me one of those. So we'll drop another piece of weight on here. And if that's going to bob just a little bit, so we'll throw a little bit more. Okay, so if that was to hold still, we'll get that to hold still. Anyway. What you can see there now is that the weight should show that now the nose still needs to come up a little bit more. So we'll take a hold of the dowel one more time. We'll give it just one quick twist. Okay, we're pretty much dead level right there, aren't we? Mm -hmm. I mean, once again, this is for illustrative purposes, but what you also see now is that we are... We're pretty close to the center of gravity. Of course, the plane is bobbing a little bit, so we'll have to deal with that. So anyway, you can see how this works. This works actually quite well. The only thing I can see is, is you have to figure out a way to do something where these cords go around because you, you might damage the covering and the planes and things like this. This is an old plane, and I really don't, you know, I'm not, it doesn't owe me anything, and I don't know it anything. So now to prove the fact, we've got this pretty close here, so now what we'll do is we'll remove all the weights from the tail and from the nose. And since we knew the plane was kind of level to begin with, so we'll go ahead and take the level off the tail also. So, if this worked the way it should, and get it to calm down a little bit. And it's right on the center of gravity. So, we actually, we actually added the weight to the tail uh, to simulate a tail heavy plane. We got to where the we got the plumb bob, or we got the uh, excuse me, we got the plane level according to the flight surface on the tail there. Um, once we did that, we were able to twist it, get it to where it needed to be, dropped weights on it to where it needed to be, and continued to adjust the dowel here back and forth to raise the nose up and down to get this over the center of gravity. Once we did all that, and then we went ahead and removed all the weight, the center of gravity basically came back to where it was. So, and I did I did do this using my fingers and I also have one of the great planes um, balancers and I'm pretty much guaranteed that that is where the center of gravity is on this plane. Um, done different tests with it and things like that. So the point is, uh, Dave, uh, thanks for showing us that for everybody else in the club. Ten bucks and 45 minutes of free time. You got probably what I can see, just, um, just the basics of what I can see through this whole thing. That's probably one of the best um, balancing tools I've ever seen. Uh, sure beats the hell out of uh, trying to turn it upside down, especially these bigger planes. you got these bigger uh, quarter scale, fifth scale, sixth scale planes that you're trying to turn upside down because the gear has to be retracted or it's underslung or it's a shoulder wing or 
whatever and trying to figure out how to balance it, get weight on it, you got to have somebody come in and help you. And basically, if you've got a few minutes to spare on this whole thing, you can basically do this by yourself. So, anyway, that's the presentation. Anybody has any questions, you know how to get a hold of me. And uh, thanks to my beautiful wife for help for helping me.